Hello, this is Easy, and welcome to the Easy UI. Um, you'll be placing two files in the uh, Z Plugs folder here, and one of them will be the Easy slash UI ZSC, then the UI Pack to Data folder. These will both be in there for this to work. And once that's loaded, we'll open up ZBrush and we will find this plugin in the preference config and it's this last button down here it's the load UI custom um, what a UI is is the interface user interface um, one of the methods that you could change the interface was up on the right hand corner to change your interface uh, layout or your interface colors um, this way if you select this uh, it's kind of a uh, guessing what you're gonna get because you really can't see what you're gonna get there so with this new plugin you can see what you're gonna get and what you're gonna select so basically if I come up to the uh, preference and config then I press this load UI custom here this is gonna give me um, some screenshots of what I can select these are screenshots of uh, my UI's that I saved that are custom uh, example this one right here you can see this one I've got some tools down here for the brushes for like modeling and if I want this UI I will select this and I get this UI here and if uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna select it again um, a lot of times I uh, like to go back to my default one this first one here this first UI here is actually my um, default UI and I have this in one of my custom ones so I can just come back here and select it back like that I had pause the video for a second to set this up here and in this next step uh, we're gonna open this back up load UI now most of all these uh, UIs that you see right here that are the custom ones are actually just modified versions of this layout one up here that comes with the default so credit to the person that made them so these are just a little bit I just did this real quick to get a few up these are just samples and nothing special so we're gonna do this uh, right click menu we're gonna do this one down here um, before I do that we're gonna go ahead and exit this and what this does is a lot of people when they right click let's get this menu to come up and when they're sometimes when they're trying to rotate something and if they click real slow this menu will come up or if they're just a single click and some people don't like that so if we go to the preference and load UI then we're gonna right click menu off as long as you're right clicking at a normal click speed not nothing real fast as you can see I just clicked it um, the menu didn't come up when I rotate on it click it and click it it don't come up now if I click real fast it will come up so you can see um, how that works only if you're clicking at normal speed and not clicking real fast um, if we want to turn that off we can turn it off by the right click menu off now basically the rest of the ones I got on here will automatically turn it off anyway so if we want to turn it off we can turn it off right there all right the next one we got um, I'm going to show you it's called open one sub palette and what this does is if we open up a sub palette we'll get these real long list on some of these palettes and it can get really lengthy here um, so let's go all the way up here long list right here so if we go to the preference here and config and load UI we got this one open one sub palette so when we do this if I select any of these options here it's going to close the rest of sub palettes up and just open this one here so if I select uh, geometry HD and we got the open <coughs> or the geometry HD there so you, I'll come down here so you can see a little bit better and you can see it's just open up one sub palette at a time and closing the rest of them
Okay, I am using a widescreen uh, resolution. I believe it's like 1920 by 1080. And when this script is running, it looks good here. Now, if you're running something real small, uh, you might see some of these buttons might not even show up. They might be jammed down the screen. And I'm going to show you how to, you can kind of fix that. So, if you don't know how to do it, you'll have to get somebody um, that knows about scripting um, that can show you. But I'm going to show you... Um, kind of simple way that you can do it uh, doesn't take too much here let me go back here to this page here now this is uh, this is gonna be open source this is actually comes from pickle logic this is an open source on the material pack 2 and all I did was change it up a little bit so credit to the person that made the script here um, if it's too big you're gonna to need to tone it down and it's in the uh, this one here called the uh, thumb size I got it to 300 um, you may need to tone it down notice I got 300 here so if we come over here um, these images are 300 by 300 they need to be square and if you notice we got UI1 config to UI one PSD they're in pairs UI2 config to UI2 PSD they're matching sets so basically what you do is you need to delete this script the ZSC you need to change your settings here and then you'll load this in ZBrush and it will create another um, ZSC if it doesn't look correctly, you need to do it again. You need to repeat the process. Delete this one. Re-edit that one. Then it will create another ZSC. Then once everything's working, this you'll put this ZSC in your plugin folder. Another thing is, as you can see, I have this down to 300. And all my PSDs are 300 by 300. So if you change this to 200, I have not tested it, but I would imagine you need to change your um, resolution on your PSD images to 200 by 200 now if we load this up and you notice all these are square images if your images that you are loading this is what you're viewing and if they're not square they may not look right in these boxes as you can see I stopped at number 13 now they start at number one then go to number two the number three and I stopped at 13 and my the next one we're going to be making is number 14 well I'm not really going to make it but I'm just going to kind of show you so if we open this up here and load UI as you can see I would labeled these in, an, in, a photo, in a photo place here and edit these and I put little uh, uh, text down here to kind of label them UI 1, UI 2, UI 3 and if we go to the next one we got UI 13 so your next one you're going to be making so it can be visible here is the UI 14 and the next one will be 15 and 16 and so on so what we're going to do is go into the next step So you want to save your uh, custom UI and you want it to show up in the script here. So if we load this up, you can see this on the second page here. We're at 13 and page 1 is full. If you don't like these, you can overwrite them. So we're at number 13. The next one that's going to be showing is number 14, then number 15, and number 16. In ZBrush, when you um, start adding these, a lot of times you, you won't see any changes until you shut ZBrush down and start it back up. So I'm not going to show you how to customize make one, but let's say you customize and you made it an interface that you like. So what you will do is you will come up to preference and once you find something and made something you like, you press save UI, then you go to the Z plug and the new UI pack two data and the last one 13. See I just clicked it. Well, I don't want to overwrite that one, but my next one, if I want to show up, will be number 14. Then the next one after that is 15 and 16 and so on. I'm not going to save that, and we're going to cancel that one out. But typically, you would just save that. 
Then the next step is if we go to the document, we have this export screen grab. Now I set up a hotkey for this because if I didn't and I click this, well it's going to screen grab and it's going to screen grab with this palette open and I don't want this palette open. Alright, so if I press Q, it's going to screen grab, then we can go ahead and locate that folder. So we go to Z plugs and let me see if we can find that folder here. Then this one will be number 14 also. So the UI image and the UI config will be have the same numbers. Um, the problem with mine right now is I'm using widescreen and that means when it screen grabs the image is going to be not square or it's going to be really wide and typically what I usually do is I come over here and I press restore sometimes you got to do this twice it's still not quite square um, but that's okay um, then what I do is press Q then I will save that as number UI 14 and I'll take this image that is that it captured and I'll square it up in another program that edit it and uh, I'll make that 300 by 300 one little last step here before I go press save UI save plugs UI pack data and these go in order how they're viewed as you can see it says UI 1 config all the way to 13 and your next one's going to be 14 notice none of them have dashes between the letters and the numbers but if we look uh, when I open this up we we'll go back here um, I got a little text down here in the bottom right hand corner it says UI dash 1 UI dash 2 I did that in a photo editing um, software um, typically um, this is just text. You don't put dashes in them, the PSDs or the config files when you save them. Because if you do and you put dashes in there, what's going to happen? They're not going to show up in the program. You got to keep the dashes out. So, your next one you're going to be saving and it's going to be the UI 14. And um, once you put it in that folder in the PSD, it will show in here. Typically, um, things in ZBrush, if you, if you don't see it, you got to shut the program down and start it back up to see new changes. So, your next. UI here will be UI 14, UI 15 here, and UI 16 here. And you can fill this thing all the way up with all the ones that you want. You can share them with your friends and repack them. And um, that's pretty much going to wrap it up.